What's up guys, Survival Nomad, back with a new video. Uh, it's been the first time I've actually uh, posted anything here in almost a month. Um, sorry about that, it's just been very stressful with my new work schedule, we're getting caught up and everything. And uh, the weather has also not permitted me to do a lot of stuff that I actually had planned for you guys, so they will be coming here in the future. Some of which you're going to see here today. Now, um, what you see here... That's a, uh, that's what I'm kind of, it's, it's basically like a Civil War style bedroll wrap, but it's actually done with the Wooby and Poncho liner that the U.S. military has been using for the longest time. I do believe they're actually transferring out of that into like Gore-Tex now, but a lot of preppers, a lot of people that get out into the outdoors, most of you have them, and this is actually a lot cheaper than going out and buying a $50 wool blanket and, uh, and a nice canvas tarp that I've honestly been, you know, or even a gum blanket like that. Um, myself included, I can't really afford that kind of stuff and still be able to produce the videos that I do for you guys in terms of uh, what else goes into play. Now, um, the reason why I'm bringing this up here is if, for those of you who watch the channel a lot or those of you who are joining the channel, I do a lot of uh, haversack camping. That's my big, it's something I really love to do, that 1800s, you know, mid-1800s style camping. And um, I think it's, it's personally uh, superior to a lot of the camping that's done today, even though I do enjoy uh, a nice tent camp or a, a hammock camp. We're going to go ahead and hop right into it, okay? And we're going to talk about this. I'm going to break it down for you, and then we're going to open it up and explain what all's going on. So now that we're here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just let you know now I'm kind of shaky today. I've been shaky for the past couple of days. I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, very, very shaky. So if the camera is, is, is jiggling a little bit, I really am sorry. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're gonna, I'm gonna explain what all is going on here. So I have my Wooby, my Wooby and my Poncho liner, I'm sorry, my Poncho liner and my Poncho here, and they're actually rolled up in a uh, Civil War style uh, design, which for haversack camping frees up a lot of things, especially since I'm now carrying my Poncho, my Poncho liner with me, because it is starting to get cooler at night to the point where I do want something to cover up in. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and talk about exactly why I do this and this is actually experimental for me and I, um, I have found that it has been very interesting and in the future I will be doing videos where I actually use a real wool blanket and the benefactors of why I'm doing this instead of just rolling it up and putting it in the bottom of my haversack like I normally do. So we're gonna go ahead and hop into that and uh, get it all ex explained and uh, show you what all is going on. So up top here I still have my paracord uh, as many of you know I do I've been using the plow point shelter a lot um, I do still have my paracord. I have that pre-cut to an existing size so that I can, uh, you know, stake down this into an A-frame if I want to and run that as my ridge line. And I always keep it at that length. I do not cut it or anything like that. Also gives me the ability to hang my haversack for those of you who uh, have not watched my haversack video yet, or at least one of the two. Down here I have a pair, uh, piece of uh, bungee cord. I will actually be adding a couple of these here. I want to do some experimenting. Um, I, uh, to explain what's going on with that, it's actually holding it together. You can use paracord, which I do usually have some leather strips or paracord with me. So that may go in or out depending on what I end up doing here with the kit in the future. Um, but for now, my, my, my small bungee cord is wrapped around here. And you can, I have this really short on me. I used it to, I kind of sized this on my wife. But um, you can actually make this a lot longer. I'm six foot, so I can actually add about six inches more if I'd like to, and I'll show you how in a minute. Um, but um, again, I want to try using paracord for my corners, and that way, if you guys have ever had a tarp with grommets, uh, I was thinking about it, and I also looked up, um, what's his name, uh, Corporal Kelly from Corporal's Corner was explaining in very good detail about how if you let the uh, bungee cords sit there as opposed to... Um, using like uh, paracord or something like that, it'll it'll allow your tarp to flap the way that it, it wants to in the wind, and it won't put a lot of wear and tear on your grommets. Um, so that's a very big benefactor to think about. I'm practically weightless, and you can roll it up inside of here, and you won't even notice it's there for the most part. Um, and I, and I did mean to say actually that was. Um, Dave Canterbury. It was Dave Canterbury who actually was pointing that out to me. I'm sure other people have said it on channels before, but Dave's got a great point there. If you if you let your tarp flap around with a little bit of mushiness in between it, it'll still stay taut and it won't tear up your tarp over time. 
especially for a dude like me who's spent almost 80% of his camping career under this exact ta poncho I'm st um, that's on the ground here. That's why it is so beat up. I bought it brand new from Helicon when I was about 10 years old when I started my scouting career. And uh, ever since then, man, I've been putting this thing through the ringer. I'm 22 almost, and it's survived my entire camping career, the entire, uh, almost the entire uh, Appalachian Trail, and it's still kicking, but I do have some grommet issues that was, I do believe, due to uh, me just hyper-using them. So uh, other than that, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing opened up for you real quick, and uh, we're going to talk about it from there. Okay, guys, so what I've got going on here now is I actually have the uh, poncho and poncho liner the poncho liner is already inside of here. I do have two different types. I have the uh, the uh, newer uh, digital Marpat woodland for um, the Marine Corps pattern in here. I do not find a uh, M81 woodland camo type anywhere, but they are pretty cheap. I think you can buy these for as cheap as like 26 bucks, maybe $20 at a... Um, at a surplus store or online, you can actually buy them. You can actually buy this whole set brand new from um, from USGI Industries, which is where this was made. I personally like the USGI one better. It gives you a bigger size, and it's just perfect for somebody that's six foot tall. For anybody who is six foot, you'll still have a little bit of space to get in here. And uh, if you're shorter than that, you can cuddle up a little better in here. So that's that's even better for you, and it covers more of your body when it's raining. Um, well, quick, quick note on that. Again, I'm six foot, and it comes down to about right here. So if you see my foot, actually, that's perfect. Like the top of my boot is where it actually sits uh, when it's pouring down rain. So it gives you a really good amount of coverage, and it also gives you a good bit of coverage on your gear as well. Very comfortable. Uh, and this thing again, it's got the snap closures. I don't like the regular ponchos because this thing has a bunch of heavy duty snap closures and grommets, so it's squared away. Um, Again, mine's really torn up, so if you see parts, just leave me alone. <laughs> anyway, what's going on here is I got my, I got my uh, rope here, my, my paracord, and then on right here I also have my bungee cord. So that's actually the consistency of this entire kit. Now, the cool thing about it is it rolls up a lot smaller than your standard roll that you'd get if you had, like, a uh, gum blanket or, a, uh, or something there to pertain like a canvas tarp. It's, very, it's also a lot, light, a lot lighter of a weight. And, it, and it, I, I'm pretty comfortable in this in about 45, 50 degrees, but I also sleep with my clothes on. So if you guys sleep without your clothes on, it may be a little different. Um, if I sleep in my underwear in this, I'm, I'm usually good to about 50 degrees as long as I have something, you know, over me or something under me other than just this. Like maybe a, a, a bedroll or some leaves, then I'll be good to go. But for summer camping, this is a very good lightweight kit as well because it's not very hot. Um, so if you do want to carry a blanket in the summertime, this is the perfect way to do it. Um, and I know it is, it is very unconventional, but again, I'm pairing this with a haversack. So um, I'm not pairing this with a backpack or anything like that, even though I do from time to time. But again, remind you, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I'm pairing it with a haversack, bringing the old style into the new um, meets new. So tradition meets technology kind of thing. It works well for me, and again, I will be getting like the wool blanket set up, everything like that here in the future. I just can't afford it at the moment. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and talk about how we can make it, um, uh, size it out for you. And another, th another reason why the sizing is important is because it also actually helps waterproof this thing completely. Now, if you look down here, you both, obviously on, on, on these three uh, sides it's going to be open because it is a poncho. So that, that side up there is going to be open. It's going to allow water in, and so is here and here. Now what you do is you keep it long-wise. You, obviously, you take that stuff out of there. A minute ago, I had it about, I don't know, four or five inches in here, maybe six inches. So I'm going to, I'm going to scoot these in just like so. And that what that's going to do is it now, it now creates that seam on this side. So now this side is waterproof. You can do the same thing down there, at least at least cap it over. If you are trying to like max this thing out for length, you can just cap it over a little bit here to where it will actually stay. Um, go ahead and get that done for you real quick. Ba bam. So cap it over. I usually keep one side a little bit longer than the other if I am gonna just cap one side. So that way at least this side's more like a burrito. Now the cool thing about this is it rolls up really small. So you can actually add like an extra pair of socks in here, just lay them out flat, an extra shirt, some extra, you know, an extra pair of pants. I usually do that actually. 
And uh, you can also put some of your dry goods, like if you have a rice bag, just kind of flatten it out in there, put it in there along with some other dry goods or some, uh, you know, like vegetation that you may be eating later. Things of that nature, you can go ahead and put those in there. Um, and if you do it right, actually towards the end here, you can put like um, tent steak pieces or, or something along that that line where you want to roll it up and it's long ways and it'll sit in, in like a, like it'll be sitting here on you. And that way it won't um, hinder the ability for it to work, which is pretty much extending your backpack as well. Um, obviously, once you have to use this, it, it is a poncho, so if you do have to use it in the rain, you can always tie it up your uh, poncho liner with this here, or this, depending on what you want to do with. I, I prefer to use that little, uh, these things you can get like a dollar store. I have this military grade one here, it's pretty good. But you see what I'm saying? It, you can still take care of your gear, even though it's raining, it's not, you're not going to have to hold something, you can still use that. So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do now, is I'm going to go ahead and uh, roll this up, and the way I'm going to roll it, I'm going to start from this side here, and I'm going to roll it in. Because what that's going to do is it's going to create that seal on this side, and there's already a seal here. And you do want to make sure that your uh, your head, your little head piece, your little head covering here, is on the inside of this. So, again, I'm going to go ahead and start that process. Maybe try and get it. All right, guys, so if you can see me here, I'm going to go ahead and remove this out of the way. Just kind of get it over here for now. And uh, I am going to scoot this in a little bit farther just because, it's again, it's my preference. Uh, you can leave it out a little bit more, but I'm going to scoot it a teeny bit. And I'm also going to scoot this side out a teeny bit just so that it fit me better and not my wife. Good nine-inch difference there. <laughs> That's not funny. I'm disgusting. All right, anyway. So now what you're going to do is you're going to start on one side, since y'all guys can see this side out here better. I'm going to start on that side, again, with the taper, with the untapered seam here, the one that's open. Go ahead and start that roll, maybe one time over, and then continue it down the line here until you get it all rolled over one time. And then you can just kind of, one, two, three, one, two, three in the middle here, and catch the rest of it up. So what you're seeing go on is it's really small. At this point, it, it, you know, you're halfway through the process, and you're still at maybe, I don't know, a two-inch diameter with a gum blanket and a uh, wool blanket or, or a cloth, whatever, what have you. You're already at three to four inches, and you're at about two pounds. So this, this drops weight off the traditional idea, and... It allows you to have a poncho that you can throw over yourself, make a shelter, um, and, and, and hundreds of other things. And it just, it's a lot more adaptable than the gum blanket. Not that I appreciate this more. I do, I do appreciate this style. I only use it about ten times, but still, it is a very interesting way to do it. So now you have your, uh, your roll here. Let me show you the finished product. So that's the entire length, almost, of your of your poncho longwise in the uh, bedroll style. All right, so the next part is pretty simple, guys. Uh, what you're going to go ahead and do is just grab it. I like to I like to keep it here for a second here. All right, anyway, so, so you have it laying right here. You don't really want to grab it yet. But um, I'll go ahead and open up all my little, my three little grommets here that I've made by uh, tying this thing up or by uh, twisting out the rope so to speak. I'll go ahead and open that up, just like so. I'll put it right under the head hole space where your, where your uh, poncho, where the uh, actual head cover is, once it's rolled. You'll put it through that little hole, so you'll take the bunny and goes up and out of the hole. And now you've effectively made, you should be able to just pick it up off the ground, just like that. And you're just going to want to wrap it over a few times. I usually go in the middle, just to kind of keep it all in the same space. So, and once you get done with that, you can just find a good spot to kind of pick, pick a good bit of this up. It doesn't really matter where. And you go ahead and just tuck it under. Sometimes it is a pain that I want to get uh, confusingly tied in between each other. 
but this one will do pretty well. And then you just pull it tight. And if you have extras, you can always just, like I said, you, you can bring most of it so that you have a couple of these left over on the right side. And you just tuck it under that side. And bam, now you've got a comfortable set. It's going to hold it from flipping in and out. And then what I like to do is flip it over so that way this little roll here is on the uh, inside of my body. Once I put this on, go ahead and grab your uh, paracord piece or your little uh, thing that you set off to the side. Bring this in. Again, with the little open flaps, if you can see it here, you want both of these to kind of sit flat against each other. So you have this one here as well. I'll show you. And you just tuck them together just like so, keeping them real tight. And you're going to take your. Uh, bungee cord, attach it to itself in a comfortable space with the little uh, sharp point trying to poke away from your tarp. You don't want that to, to ruin your tarp, put a hole in it or anything. Uh, I like to go about four inches up. That seems to be the most comfortable spot for this. And then you wrap it over a few times. Boom. Boom until you start running out of uh, you know corded space. Then go ahead You do want to make sure that that first, um, you do want to make sure that that first little time you wrap around it when you when you attach it to itself is very tight when you'll have this issue. What I'm talking about here is this first time here, once I, I've attached it to itself, you want to cinch all of the possible um, material over to the point where your bungee cord is pretty much like, feels like paracord. Not, not to where it breaks, but just around that point. And you just keep wrapping it over until you come back up and around. One last time here. And you can attach it to itself. Bam. And again, you want to make sure that these are uh, very tight. And boom, just like that, you've got your roll. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one on for you so you can actually see how small of a print it leaves. I mean, it is a bulky piece. It's an outdated principle, but it still works very effectively. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on and let you see it now that it's uh, been re-rolled. All right, guys. So as you can see, um, I got it on now. It leaves a very comfortable end print. You can still move your head to left and right. Unlike the traditional version, which you use like, a, like the Civil War actual components of the Civil War kit, um, it's a lot smaller, it's a lot thinner, I don't know if you can see it here, but it's extremely thin. Let me try and get you a side view here. It's extremely thin, it's almost paper thin. I mean, the best that I could feel this at, if you look at it here, and not my little, my mountain boob here, but like, the actual piece. Put that over my titty for you. <laughs> is, uh, it's a lot skinny, it's very, very skinny, and uh, it's very comfortable, actually. It's very lightweight in comparison to the heavy style. And uh, what this does for me, I'd just probably say this is probably about as thick as, I don't know, a winter parka jacket at best. And uh, it fla it's flat, so it's, it's, very in it's very inconspicuous. You can actually probably put this under a jacket if you really wanted to. And i um, show you down here, which is kind of what I was talking about earlier. As you can see, it actually stops right at my waistline. So when it, when it stops at my waistline there, um, and you go ahead and you have that opportunity to uh, be comfortable. You can set your arms straight down here practically, if you can see me. And again, it is outdated, so you're not going to be able to do it all the way. But it gives you a very comfortable, like when I set my arm down, that's where it normally hangs anyway. This isn't really hindering me from flopping my arm in. It just sits where my, nar my arm really is all the time. Then you can go ahead and put your haversack across the left side. Uh, maybe even have, um, if, you, if you're carrying a canteen that's, that's on an actual, like a, like a sling, you can put it there. Uh, me, I use my Serbian mess kit on my belt all the time, so that's not a big issue for me. But, uh, and then you can still use this arm. Now, it, there is a lot of stuff that, about this specific design for, uh, that is uh, different than um, the actual traditional style. That, that there are some give and take here now, um, and we'll talk about that here in a, in a later video. But the biggest give and take, realistically, guys, that I've seen is that people that like the traditional camp and they see you like this, they're like, what? 
But let me tell you, if they gave it a shot, they'd understand why. This is this is very nice. It's very comfortable. It's it's easy. It looks funny until you get used to it. But um, I tell you, once you try it out, you really understand what I'm talking about. Especially especially if you ever if you ever hiked a long distance with a haversack before. Like I like to uh, do three four day hikes, 16 miles a day with a haversack. Uh, it's not very comfortable to have this amount of weight just balled up at the bottom of your haversack. And it also takes up that space in your haversack, so you lose places to put food and comfort items. But now that I've taken that out, I can also carry my blanket comfortably and safely. And um, I, I can also access this stuff without having to take off my haversack and open it up and flap everything out. And all I do is just unroll this, roll up my blanket piece, and go about my day. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe at the bottom. Uh, if you have any questions or comments like that, again, just leave them down there. I do, I do read that very fluently. Almost every day I check all of my videos. Um, again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.